it's Bobby aka Paginator and it is time once again to do a TBR game. Since it's September and I'm back to school, I'm going to switch from the TBR Pursuit game that I've been doing back to G's TBR Vitar game. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. All right, Ronald is right there if you can't see him. And here we go with roll number one. One. D20. So I'm gonna need to make a list of 20 books, roll a D20 dice, and that will choose the title for me. All right, I've got my list here. I've got my D20 dice, and we're going to give this a roll and see what we get. Seven. Vengeance of the Pirate Queen. Roll number one got us a d20, and I rolled Vengeance of the Pirate Queen by Trisha Levenseller. I have this nice, pretty special edition right here. And the synopsis tells us, As an assassin working for the Pirate Queen, 18-year-old Sorinda is surprised when Alosa's next task for her is not to kill a new target, but to captain a handpicked crew on a rescue mission. Unfortunately, her sailing master is 20-year-old Kieran. He may be the best helmsman in the Pirate Queen has, but Sorinda finds him a real pain in the arse. Sadly, there are a few places on a ship to hide from an attentive man. As the crew of the Vengeance faces dangerous waters and deadly sea creatures, they accidentally awaken the King of the Undersea, a being who can control the dead. Their rescue mission quickly turns into a fight to save the world, but first Sorinda must save herself from becoming an undead queen. Roll number two. Three. One, two, three. Sneak peek. So that's when I look at someone else's TBR and choose a title from them. Roll number two got us a sneak peek, and I decided to look at channels that I hadn't really watched before or I had watched very little. So on All Rad Reads, I found Killer Instinct by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the second book in the Natural series. I have read the first one, so this is perfect for me to just go to number two. And this is about um, Cassie Hobbs, who has this gift for profiling people, and it's gotten her this like position on a, a youth force for the FBI. Um, these group kids on the force um, have crime solving abilities just kind of naturally and they work for the FBI to figure out crimes. <laughs> I can't really tell you much more than that because this is a sequel so I don't want to give anything away but if that sounds like an interesting premise to you definitely check out the naturals and then you'd continue on to this one. Roll number three. One. Our dice went skedaddling that way and we have the uh, element pyramids. So I've done this in different kinds of ways, but I think what I'm gonna do is just simply roll the dice this time. So one will be air, two will be fire, water will be three, and four will be earth. And if I roll a five or a six, I'll just roll again until I get a one through four number. So let's see, oh, three. So that was water, which is a fantasy. Roll number three, we did the element triangles and got water, which means a fantasy. And so we're going to read Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. This one um, has been out for a while, but I waited to get the paperback edition before I read it for some reason. I wanted the purple sprayed edges, I guess. <laughs> We're gonna read the synopsis for this one. A dark prince battling an impossible curse. The Prince of Envy has never claimed to be a saint, but when a cryptic note, a cryptic note arrives, signaling the beginning of the deadly game, he knows it will take more than a hint of sin to win and save his falling demon court. Though none of his meticulous plans prepare him for her, the frustrating artist who ignites his sin like no other. A mysterious artist with the secrets of her own. The trouble with scoundrels is that they haven't a modicum of honor. In fact, Miss Camilla Antonius learns after one of Waverly Green's most notorious rakes attempts to blackmail her. To avoid a ruinous scandal, Camilla must enter a devil's bargain with envy, unaware his game will awaken her true nature. One last chance to be set free. Together, Envy and Camilla embark on a perilous journey through the underworld from glittering demon courts to the sultry vampire realm and beyond while trying to avoid the most dangerous trap of all, falling in love. So very similar vibes to um, Kingdom of the Wicked, but different characters. Roll number four. Four. One, two, three, four plus two. So we go one, two, and that brings us to the White Lotus, which I don't remember what that means. Oh, I can use one book for two prompts this month if I want to, um, but we don't have... Uh, I'm still going to pick a card for this one. 
Omashu Mountains on the cover. So rule number four, um, we got the White Lotus, but we did pull a card. Uh, we got Omashu Mountains on the cover or on the title. And I tweaked this a little bit um, because this is a book that I need to read soon. It's an arc that I was sent and there are mountains on the map inside. So they're not on the cover strictly, but close enough. I'm calling it. <laughs> So this is, as I, uh, I said, an arc that I was sent for review. It is Alaris by Fanny Vern, and we will read the synopsis. Druids living secluded in the astral forest, Lucine and Solahan have been blessed by the star since birth and are poised to become the protectors of the Druidic clans during the eclipse. But when a strange curse befalls the ceremony, the twins, sole survivors of the massacre, find themselves separated. Taken away from his loved ones by an enigmatic and malevolent being, will Solahan succumb to the discovery of his deepest desires? Left to herself and to the dangers of a world of which she knows nothing, and meeting fellow travelers with contrasting devotions and colorful personalities, will Lucine manage to uncover much more than she hoped for? Between bounds of love and friendship, will the surprising group of adventurers succeed in finding Solahan before it's too late and in saving humanity? I'm going to show you the art on the back as well because it looks like just a fun group of characters. Roll number five. Don't ask me where that voice came from because I have no idea. One and sneak peek again. Crap. Roll number five, we got sneak peek again. And so I went to the channel Sarah Hart's Books and I found Five Broken Blades. This is by Mai Corland. And I did get this one from Book of the Month. Barnes & Noble does a really beautiful special edition of this, FYI. Uh, this one says, It's the season for treason. The king of Yusan must die. The five most dangerous liars in the land have been mysteriously summoned to work together for a single objective, to kill the god king Jun. He has it coming. Under his merciless immortal hand, the nobles flourish, while the poor and innocent are imprisoned, ruined, or sold. And now each of the five blades will, be, will come for him. Each has tasted bitterness from the hired hitman seeking atonement, a lovely assassin who seeks freedom, or even the prince banished for his cruel crimes. None can resist the sweet, icy lure of vengeance. They can agree on murder. They can agree on treachery. But for these five killers, each versed in deception, lies, and betrayal, it's not enough to forge an alliance. To survive, they'll have to find a way to trust each other, but only one can take the crown. Let the best liar win. This sounds intense. Rule number six. Five. One, two, three, four, five, two books. Ugh. I have to do two prompt cards and select two books to read instead of one. Here's our first prompt. You, book with the word moon in the title or moon on the cover. And the second one is Flopsy, read a book that you find intimidating. Great. Rule number six, we had to get two books. So the first one we um, pulled you, moon in title or on the cover. And we have Dream Slide Beneath. There's a little moon right there. It's by Rebecca Ross, an author that I always love. And this one says, the realm of Azenor has been cursed. Every new moon, magic flows from the nearby mountain and brings nightmares to life. Only magicians who serve as territory wardens stand between people and their worst dreams. Clementine Madigan is ready to follow in her father's footsteps as the warden of Hearswith, even though she yearns to study the wilder side of magic. Instead, she must record townspeople's nightmares so she and her father are prepared for the danger of the new moon. When her father's domain is challenged by two magicians, Clementine is drawn into a centuries-old conflict. She seeks revenge on one of the brothers who dueled with her father, but as she gets closer to the handsome young magician, secrets begin to rise and Clementine once keen on vengeance must unite with her rival and face the realm's curse which seems to be haunting her every turn. The second book we got for roll number six is Flopsy, a book that you find intimidating which is just what you need when you have extra books to read, right? So I picked up Lady of Steel and Straw. This is by Erica Ivy Rogers. I got this arc at a bookstagrammer event at the King's English. Sorry, Ooh, I'm going in and out there. Let's see if I can hold this better for you. And for some reason, it just intimidates me. I, I, I can't even tell you exactly why. I, I, it does, but let's, let's learn about it. Lady Charlotte Sand was born to calm the restless dead, but her power has grown unpopular thanks to the newly ascendant religion of the silent gods. Worse, her family's ancestral guardian, a lavender scarecrow who was once a defender of the crown, hasn't woken for a new heir since her father's sordid death. With other guardians also reduced to pitiful bags of herbs on distant farms, the Order of the Guardians is struggling 
is a struggling remnant filled with political exiles, but darkness stirs in Nouveau and the spirits of the dead are turning into vengeful race with alarming frequency. Captain Luke de Montaigne is a pious follower of the Silent Gods, and he comes calling on Sand Manor with orders to collect the magic hearts of every sleeping guardian. His success would purge the kingdom of the old god once and for all, but Charlotte proves defiant and triggers a faction war. As an army of the dead amasses and dormant warriors stir from slumber, Luke and Charlotte grapple with a forbidden attraction, kill the other, and step closer to victory, or yield to the electricity between them. The hearts they stand to lose may in fact be their own. So this is an arc, but the book did come out in June of this year. So if it sounds interesting, you should be able to find it. Roll number seven, two. I go this way. Okay, pick a card. Badger Mole, read a hardcover book. Roll number seven, we got Badger Mole, a uh, hardcover. And I picked a book that I've been meaning to read for ages. It came in a subscription box. It is Seven Faceless Saints by M.K. Lobb. And this cool art print came with it. This tells us, a brutal killer stalks Ombrasia, a city ruled by the disciples of the Seven Faceless Saints, a city where those with magic lived in comfort while the rest struggled to survive, a city caught in 20-year war of attrition, a battlefront consuming a generation of cons conscripts. Roz Lacertosa will do anything to tear down the corrupt system of Ombrasia and get justice for her father, who was murdered by the military, including infiltrating the palazzo to spy for the rebellion whilst training as a disciple of the Saint Patience. Damien Venturi is the youngest captain in the history of, the, of Palazzo security, expected to be ruthless and strong and to serve the saints with unquestioning devotion, but he's scarred by his experiences on the front line, striving to please his brutal and detached father, and the thing he fears most is facing Roz, who he left behind when he went to war. When a disciple is murdered, Roz and Damien must team up to hunt the killer, no matter the consequences. They must face their buried emotions and the love they once shared as they uncover corruption and conspiracies that will bring darkness and chaos to the streets of their home. This um, cover is different than the traditional cover, and the traditional cover looks more like this, like it's in the sprayed edges, this white creamy color with the red accents. Just FYI. Roll number eight. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pick a card. Ba Sing Se, a book from a finished series. Roll number eight, we got Ba Sing Se, a book from a finished series. And this is a series that is finished and that I need to read because it's been ages since it came out. Lady Midnight, she's been waiting for me. She's chunky. It's the Dark Artifices book one and I have all three of them sitting here on my shelf so I might as well just dive in. In a secret world where half-angel warriors called shadow hunters are sworn to fight demons, parabatai is a sacred word. A parabatai is your best friend and battle partner. Parabatai can be everything to each other, but they can never fall in love. It causes a lot of trouble. Emma Carstairs is a shadow hunter, the best in her generation. Together with her parabatai, Julian Blackthorn, she patrols the streets of Los Angeles where fairies, the most powerful of supernatural creatures, teeter on the edge of open war with shadow hunters. When bodies, both fairy and human, turn up, bearing marks that match those found on Emma's own murdered parents, an uneasy alliance is formed. This is Emma's chance for revenge and Julian's chance to get back at his brother, a prisoner of the fairy courts. All they have to do is solve the murders within two weeks and before the murderer targets them. So I read the entire, like, City of Bones, like that, the Mortal Instruments series, and the Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess, that series. Um, but I have not read this one yet, so I am hoping that I'm going to love it. Roll number nine. Four. One, two, three, four. Another card. Leaves on the Vine. Read a book you think will be sad or a book that has leaves on the cover. Roll number nine is Leaves on the Vine, a book you think will be sad or has leaves on the cover. I went with leaves on the cover because I have this beautiful book here, Dragon Fruit. We have lots of leaves here. This is another book of the month book and it is by Makia Lucier. And here's what it is about. Hanale of Tamarind is the cherished daughter of an old island family, but when her father steals a sea dragon egg meant for an ailing princess, she is forced into a life of exile. In the years that follow, Hanale finds solace in studying the majestic sea dragons that roam the Nomi Nomi Sea, until one day an encounter with a female dragon offers her what she desires most, a chance to return home and to right a terrible wrong. 
Samatamahenale, or Sam, is the last remaining prince of Tamarind, but he can never inherit the throne, for Tamarind is a matriarchal society. With his mother ill and his grandmother nearing the end of her reign, Sam is left with two choices, to marry or to find a cure for the sickness that has plagued his mother for ten long years. When a childhood companion returns from exile, she brings with her something he has not felt in a very long time, hope. But Hanale and Sam are not the only ones searching for the dragon fruit, and as they battle enemies both near and far, there is another danger they cannot escape, that of the dragon fruit itself. This, I feel like, is going to remind me of Hawaii just because of the names of the characters and stuff, but it sounds like it could be interesting. And rule number 10. Two. One, two, pick a card. Team Avatar, a book you got because you heard good things about it from the community. And rule number 10, we got Team Avatar, but not the Team Avatar where you have a friend pick the Team Avatar space on the board. And that means a book you got because you heard good things from the community. And this is a book that I had tried to read once before and kind of got stuck, but I really, really want to read the series. So I'm going to try it again. And I heard about this um, online on BookTube, mostly from J.D. Ray Reads. It is Spellslinger by Sebastian de Castell. Magic is a con game. Kellen is moments away from facing his first mage's duel and the start of four trials that will make him a spellcaster. There's just one problem. His magic is gone. As his 16th birthday approaches, Kellen falls back on his cunning until a daring stranger challenges him to take a different path. So we'll give this one another go and hopefully I'll be able to enjoy it. So that's it for the rolls. I do want to talk a little bit about the um, Aurelium Autumn Equinox. That is G's year-long readathon that she does. And usually in August, but this year it's in September, we do the Autumn Equinox. And you have to read certain books to achieve levels for your career that um, you have chosen as part of the game. So I am a crafts mage, so I have two prompts I need to read for inscription and three for artificery. So my first prompt is the title has all the letters of your first name. So Five Broken Blades that I showed you has got all the letters. It has two B's, an O, and an I in there. So that'll work. Um, the Q level, I need a color wheel for the title. And I haven't actually spun a color wheel. And I was going to bring my iPad and do it right now. And I forgot. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we got black. Now I can use these a really like the books I'm doing for the um, regular TBR game. I can use them also as a really um prompts. So we have oh yes, Killer Instinct black cover. We'll use that one. Okay, for artificery, I the first book I need to read is a cover in the color of your birthstone, which is opal or pink because October has two birthstones. And so if we go with pink, which is the tourmaline, then I can read Throne of the Fallen for that one. For the next one in Artificery, I have to read a book with a non-human protagonist. And I did not prepare well for this. I'm looking on Goodreads at a list of non-human protagonist books. And I'm looking to see if there's anything on here that I want to read or maybe even reread. Oh, I found one. Goodreads save the day. <laughs> so we have The Wonderling by Mira Bartok. Part animal and part human, the poor groundlings in the orphanage toil in classroom and factory, forbidden to enjoy ordinary childhood things, most particularly singing and music. When an innocent one-eared fox-like 11-year-old with no proper name protects a young bird groundling from being bullied, she gives him two incredible gifts, a real name and a best friend. Together they escape from the home and embark on an extraordinary quest. This one's been sitting on my shelf for a while, so that's good news to get it done. And then the last one, we need a book with a number in the title. I'm already using Five Broken Blades for the first prompt, so I can't reuse that. I could do Seven Faceless Saints, though that has a number in it too. So there we go, we got Seven Faceless Saints that will work for that one. Yay! Are any of you guys out there doing the Aurelium Autumn Equinox? If so, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know um, how your reading is going these days, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.